Somewhere inside the uh, corporate halls of Cooler Master, they got together and said, we need to make the perfect mouse. But then they realized they can't make the perfect mouse. They have to make the perfect mice. Or, or wait, glasses, glasses. The perfect mouses. All right, so right here we have two new master mice. Master mice? Can you say that? Could master mouse? <laughs> so we have the master mouse 520 and the master mouse 530. Now the Master Mouse 520 has uh, a little wing on the side for your ring finger, and the Master Mouse 530 is a more traditional shape, shall we call it. Now these both have almost identical specs, and they have the top of the line um, Pixar 3360 sensor. It's flawless, there's no jitter. I've been playing some games with both of these uh, quite extensively. It's the 3360 sensor, and they did a hell of a job with the implementation, so there's not really any complaints. Let's take a look at their website here, and I will explain some of these specs right here. The ones that are the most important, first off, the tracking speed with this sensor is 50G. Now, what that means is on your mouse mat, when you're moving really fast and you want to, like, you know, quickly turn around, like, no scope 360, bro. Well, you're going to need to flick the mouse, and sometimes flicking the mouse can accelerate the, you know, accelerates too fast. The sensor can't keep up with all the data. Well, this is not going to have any problems whatsoever with, I mean, it's 50G's acceleration. You can, you can move this mouse at ludicrous speed and uh, it's still going to be able to grab all the information you're not going to miss anything and it's not going to throw any errors now when you get some of the lower end gaming grade sensors like the like the new 3050 that one's a great sensor but if you're flicking and playing professional fps and doing that you know really fast move motions not so good so uh moving on down the list distance is around two millimeters and you can actually adjust this which is nice uh processor we have a 32-bit arm now why is there an arm processor in here well, they've got a lot of different things like, first off, onboard memory. You got 512 kilobytes of that. And then you've got your Omron switches, 20 million clicks for the left and right click there. The body on this, on their specs sheet, matte UV coating. Now the matte UV coating, um, it feels slightly rough to the touch. It's not as like smooth, uh, glossy UV at all, but I think it looks nicer than glossy. And that's more of a, I mean, just my own personal preference thing. I don't like the shiny black. And also it's not quite as comfortable or soft as the rubberized coating, but you know, the rubberized coating usually lasts three, four years, and then it starts to get a little gunky if you play a lot of games. So they've opted to go with this one for longevity of the mouse. They both have a flexible cable and I really like this cable. It's like they were listening to some of, some of uh, the different reviews on the internet, but it is not a braided cable. This is a uh, lightweight, pretty durable rubber cable. So that's the main thing with all of the different specs uh, and understanding, you know, just how good these things perform. Now let's take a look at each individual mouse and just kind of break it down. First off, starting with the 520. Now the 520, it's um, more for claw grip. And that's why I said they needed to make the, you know, the best mice. They had to make a couple different versions. This one is really going to be good for claw grip. Sort of a shape similar to their CM uh, Storm Spawn, which I thought was an awesome shaped uh, mouse. It was like almost like a little hockey puck. This one has a little bit longer um, at, you know, the 78.5 by 118 by 29.5 millimeters and inches at 3.09 by 4.65 by 1.16 inches. Now the weight with the cable is 135 grams, but the weight without the cable is 101 grams, which is pretty much perfect for a competitive gaming mouse. Palm grip is, is pretty comfortable, especially if you have small hands and you want the pinky rest. Palm grip is going to be comfortable. Um, now this has your, you know, very, very buttons. You've got two buttons on the top, two side buttons, just like every other mouse is pretty much on the market. This one only has one uh, DPI button right here. Then you've got your scroll wheel. It's uh, rubber and the light LED will shine through. You can depress that to make a, a you know, an, another click. And then there's one little spot uh, with a rubber grip with a pretty heavy texture over here for your, probably your pinky gonna be right there, grabbing onto that so it doesn't slip off. No rubber grips on this side. Now let's talk about the RGB. We've got RGB on this one. We've got a couple different zones here. We've got the RGB right here. That's gonna be mostly for your, showing you what color your DPI is or what color it corresponds to your DPI, CPI, whatever. Uh, then down here we have this goofy looking, and sorry, Cooler Master, in my opinion, I don't know what they're trying to do here with this weird shape, but it's a shape with the words Cooler Master on the inside. I guess it's, they just decided to outline the outside of the shape. So you get this weird shape on the back of your mouse from across the room, but whatever. And then we have, uh, you know, an RGB zone down here on the bottom. Now let's move over to the other mouse and get out. I'm going to talk about something cool about both of these in just a second, but I'm going to move over to the other mouse. The other mouse is more of a traditional shape, um, really good for palm grip. 
you can do a little bit of claw with this as well. You know, you've got really nice grips on the side. And that's the main difference in the two, other than the shape. The Master Mouse 530 has these really large rubber grips on the side, and it feels extremely durable. The grips have a honeycomb pattern on them. They're pretty noticeable when you're playing games. I'm pretty persnickety about the quality of my mice, and not really any rattle. You can hear a little bit of sensor rattle, but not much. I mean, it, I would expect more rattle in a mouse actually than this, so that's pretty interesting. But the grips on the side, I do notice and I do think about them, so they're very pronounced grips. Some people are gonna love it, and I'm somewhere in the middle where it's like, yeah, I can be a little bit less, so it'll be okay, but it feels pretty good. Other side of the mouse has the same grip, and we have our different RGB zones that were very similar to the other one, except it does not have an RGB, uh, I guess, trim around the back here. No RGB trim. Comes in at 99 grams. Really nice weight on that one. And the dimensions are 60.4 by 40.2 by 124.8 millimeters in inches. That's 2.38 by 1.58 by 4.91. So with the cable entirely, it's 132.5 grams, but usually measure these without for use on the desk. Just 99 grams. Really nice. Both have polytetrafluoroethylene feet. Uh, except for the 520 has an extra pad because of the wing on the side and then you get your sensor and their lens there in the middle so all good there some really interesting features here now you can use a combination of button presses to do some functionality that you would normally have to do in the software so they've given you software if you want to go in there and mess around with that you can and you can you have more control over over you know things there but if you don't want to install the software well you can do like a combination of pressing your CPI button or your DPI button, whatever they want to call it, and your forward and back buttons to change your RGB mode. That means like breathing or not breathing or crazy rainbow light show mode, which is kind of what it's doing right now. That's giving me nightmares. You can turn RGB off. You can change the RGB color um, through cycle through a few different colors and that sort of thing, all right here on the mouse. Now, one thing that's interesting is the RGB zones are separated from the colors that you use for your DPI when you're messing with it on the mouse. So it comes up with a little bit of goofy looking, you know, like, okay, I've got my green or my whatever color RGB on the back, but I'm also using this DPI that's corresponding to this color. So you have two different colors going on in your mouse at the same time. You can go into software and make it all the same color, but I couldn't figure out how to do that with all the button combinations and that sort of thing. Now, above and beyond that, we do have the onboard memory and it can store up to five profiles right on board with the mouse. So you don't have to go and install the software if you just want to keep your profiles right here, you can. And then you can cycle through them again with button combinations. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to use that because when you buy the mouse, it's all right there in the box and it tells you very simply how to do it. That is very thoughtful. Um, I wish that it could do a few more things because now that we've had a taste of what you can do without the software, I want even more. But as it is, it's a huge step in the right direction. And I see this mouse as an industry is taking a very big step in the right direction. Of course, we still have the marketing team that came in and were like, guys, it's, it's, we have to do the maximum spec with the 12,000, you know, DPI so we can put that on the box. We need that crap. Um, so they won that battle and it does have the 12,000 DPI, even though no one's going to use it. The sensor is not recommended to be used at that, that crazy high DPI. No one's going to game like that if they know what they're doing. Uh, most people are going to run this thing well under 5,000. In fact, I would say 3,200 would be a good spot. 1600s just fine some people are even going to game at like 800 but don't use this thing at the max uh, spec that's just ridiculous and it's purely marketing but other than that we have some pretty clean mice My, one other gripe with this is the separation between the buttons here and the actual body of the mouse that's a really big gap right there one of the biggest i've seen on any mice out there in the in, in the market a lot of it's done for aesthetic i'm sure but the the, the space right here is so big that i'm worried that you uh you guys out there might get your doritos in there so just be careful and get a whole chip in there. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it. The only other thing I want to mention on this is the the tip of the USB here. Man, that's like freaking fuchsia. That's, that's I don't even want to plug it in. It's so beautiful. I just want to look at this gold plated fuchsia USB. These master mice, ma mouses. These master mouses are, uh, are pretty epic and they perform well. Uh, if I had a hat, I would take it off for you guys, Cooler Master. Good job. All right, that's for you guys. Cool, Master. Bye. Oh, get a shirt, would you? Thanks, everyone. Thanks to our Patreon people. And bye.